So just how did Leslie Headland's brainchild, Lucasfilm's Disney Star Wars, The Acolyte, manage to fall even further than we anticipated in the ratings? Find out in just a moment. But first, I want to take the time to thank everyone who takes the time out of the day to watch my videos. Um, if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Leave a comment on your way out before you leave. Those of you that are returning, thank you for coming back. And if you have yet to subscribe, what are you waiting for? So, on with the video. So, the Acolyte. Nielsen ratings have come out. And needless to say, yikes. They're not good. They're not good at all. From over at Cosmic Book News, Matt McGloin posted this a um, couple hours ago. The Acolyte Nielsen ratings, Disney Star Wars fan base plummets by 75%. 75%. That, and they're, they were talking about season two. I guess you can greenlight season two if you're Disney and you just want to burn money, burn cash. Because that's what it would be. It'd be burning cash. Uh, the data reveals the viewership numbers are the second worst for Disney Star Wars. The Acolyte Nielsen ratings are in. And as expected, they're not good. With the numbers being the second worst for Disney Star Wars. We knew the viewership was lower than Ahsoka. But it also has learned... The viewership is much lower than The Mandalorian by what looks to be nearly 75%. It's lower than Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's even lower than The Book of Boba Fett. The only series so far that The Acolyte beats is Andor in terms of viewership, and it's by a smidge. Not much. The Acolyte also costs nearly double that of Ahsoka. You know, this series cost $187 million. Just over $22 million an episode. And while the Nielsen ratings reveal that Ahsoka's viewership is nearly double that of the Acolyte, Disney and Bob Iger definitely can't be happy with these numbers. So here you have uh, a Nielsen chart from June 3rd to June 9th, 2024. The Acolyte sitting number seven at 448 million minutes. And that was after episode two. So that was week one. Because remember, they did a double shot. Episodes one and two were released week one. Or the first week, the premiere of the Acolyte. So just what are the Acolyte Nielsen ratings? Nielsen... They're the big dogs. They're the one everybody goes to when it comes to, hey, what's my viewership for my show? Whether it's on a streaming platform or on cable TV or even terrestrial TV or satellite. Released its streaming ratings for the week of June 3rd through June 9th. The Acolyte premiered its first two episodes on June 4th. According to Nielsen, the first two episodes of The Acolyte were watched for, for 488 million minutes. Or if we take the average of the two episodes, that's 244 million minutes an episode. Now, what about some of the other shows? Let's talk Ahsoka. This is from Nielsen. That was watched for 829 million minutes. So that averages out with the back-to-back -back episodes, week one premiere on August 22nd of 2023, 414 and a half minutes per episode. Mandalorian season three, 823 million minutes for that episode, March 1st, 2023. Andor, three episodes on its premiere on its launch on September 21st, 2022, and it was watched 208 million minutes per episode for a total of 624. Obi-Wan, two episodes premiered May 27th, 2022, 1,026 minutes, an average of 513 million minutes an episode. Book of Boba Fett. It only did one episode for its premiere, and it was 389 million minutes on December 29th, 2021. And we'll go to season two of The Mandalorian. One episode only. 
1,031 million minutes on October 30th, 2020. We don't have the Nielsen numbers for Mando season one back in 2019. So as you can see, it's not looking good for the Acolyte. In fact, out of all these Disney shows mentioned, Mandalorian season two and season three rank one and two. Obi-Wan is third, Ahsoka is fourth, Book of Boba Fett's fifth, The Acolyte sits in sixth, and Andor sits in seventh place. Again, you don't get the Mandalorian season one, those numbers aren't available. But I'd be willing to bet the Mandalorian season one would probably be in the top spot. That'd be my guess, which would push the Acolyte down to eight out of nine. That's just a guess, though. So, viewings and run times. We want to figure out the average viewings for each premiere because the run times for the episodes are different. We divide the Nielsen viewership numbers by the run time. We see not much changes except for Mando Season 3 and Boba Fett. Mando Season 3 bump is likely because of Luke Skywalker appearing in Boba, but regardless, the Acolyte still ranks second to last. In fact, um, the run time... Looks here, 82, this might be the viewing time. Mandalorian season three premiere, 37 minute total runtime, one episode, 22.24 million viewings. Two episodes for the Acolyte, 82 minutes runtime, 5.95 million viewings. That's not good, folks. That's not good at all. So what the data reveals is that there's a significant difference in popularity when comparing the top show, The Mandalorian, to what's at the bottom, The Acolyte. The data reveals that the majority of fans who watched Mandalorian didn't tune in for The Acolyte or much of the other Star Wars shows. Nearly 75% weren't interested, as indicated by the significant 73.25% drop in viewership. And again, I know it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, for lack of a better term. This is what happens when you put the message or you push an agenda over telling a compelling story and character development and good acting. If, if the word of mouth would have got out that, hey, this, is a, this show is going to be, this is the premise, and we'll use the same premise. The premise is it's going to be a, a, a murder mystery whodunit type thing involving uh, the Jedi and the Sith and the High Republic era. Granted, the Sith were supposed to be extinct for a millennia. And this takes place 100 years prior to the Phantom Menace. But if the casting wouldn't have been done to just check boxes, diversity, equity, and inclusion... And if the story was good, then people would have went to, would have tuned in to see this show. But as it stands, people aren't tuning in. The only ones tuning in are people like me who are just, you know, wanting to watch the train wreck and then make videos and content about it. So I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you guys make of these numbers? I mean, to me, this is abysmal. This is this is Disney just burning cash. And like I said in the beginning, there's talk of season two. I think that talk should be nipped in the bud. Unless Disney really wants to burn another $180, $190 million on a series that's not going to draw eyeballs. That's not going to make them any money. But what do you guys think? Comment in the comment section down below. While you're at it, please take the time, if you would, to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And um, share this video out there with your friends and family. I'm sure people are interested in, in, in what's going on within uh, Disney and Disney Lucasfilm and Disney Star Wars as it pertains to shows like this that are doing no more than pushing an agenda and not telling a compelling story. So with all that, folks... I hope you have a great Tuesday and I will see you guys 
Later.